Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Bilal Abdul Karim for On the Ground News this third day of August 2017. Recently, the group known as HTS or Hayat al Tahrir Sham overpowered the fighting organization Ahrar Sham. In doing so, HTS is now the major faction in Idlib and northern Syria. Yesterday, the United States government issued a statement entitled, quote, Position of the United States government regarding recent events in Idlib. Some of the main points in the statement are as follows. By taking this step, Al-Qaeda is putting the future of northern Syria at grave risk to serve their own personal and partisan goals. Everyone should know that Al-Jolani and his gangs will be responsible for what happens to Idlib. Nusra Front and its leaders who pledged allegiance to Al-Qaeda will remain as a target to the United States of America regardless as to the name they are working under. The plan of Nusra to disguise itself under the label of the so-called civil administration is just a trick. And finally, we are committed to alleviating the human suffering of the Syrian people. It is interesting to note a few things as many in the West see the U.S. as a friend to the Syrian people, while few Syrians see it that way. The statement, we are committed to alleviating the human suffering of the Syrian people. More than half a million people have been killed by the Syrian government thus far, while the U.S. and all its military hasn't launched a single purposeful airstrike that injured a single Syrian Arab army soldier. Even the one airstrike on the purported airfield that launched the deadly chemical attack in Hama resulted in no casualties because the United States uh, Department of State warned Assad's chief ally, the Russians, that they were coming in advance. Air Wars, a UK-based watchdog group, estimates that the civilian death toll from coalition airstrikes are at 3,800. This means the U.S. and its allies have killed more civilians than Nusra or Jabhat al-Fatih Sham or Hayat al-Tahrir Sham has even been accused of since they started operating in the Syrian territories six and a half years ago at the start of the Civil War. All of the forces that the U.S. has trained to fight in Syria are sternly warned that they are not to fight against, against Assad in any way and will only fight ISIS. While ISIS is indeed a cancer to the Syrian people, let's not forget that ISIS is just the symptom while Assad is the actual disease. However, Assad's remaining in power maintains the status quo, for the West anyway, and leaves weapons of mass destruction in the hands of one of the most brutal dictators of our time. My name is Bilal Abdul Karim for On the Ground News. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.